Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, another edition of MMADraft.com. I am Frank Trigg in the Don Best Studios here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And right now in Sacramento is Veronica Rothlinghauser. Veronica, how are you doing? Hey, Frank. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I, I can't complain, but Sneaky Tommy told me a little story. He said you just got done working out and that he made you work out so hard that you felt sick. You threw up before you came on camera. Is that true? No, that's not true. So you're trying to tell me Tommy's a liar? He lied to me? Um, he's just upset. He just got done getting a black eye, so he's just trying to throw some out there. Is that black eye from you? <laughs> well, uh, only he knows, so. <laughs> well, here, here's the good news about, and, and talking about black eyes, there is a huge video right now on YouTube that goes on about you that is about five, six seconds long. The good juiciest part, it's really a five minute video, but the best part's about five, six seconds. It's got over four million hits. It's you in one of your fights knocking out your opponent very, very quickly and very, very efficiently. Let's ask the serious question. How much notoriety and how much pressure is that 4 million YouTube hit viewership getting onto you now? It has definitely increased uh, the awareness of me uh, around the MMA community, uh, which is you know a great thing. Um, publicity is obviously a part of the sport. It's it's one of you know one of the many that I that I plan to uh, to bring. So I mean you know just different things for me, Frank. You know, and, and it's kind of weird for me because most girls that come in MMA, they go, look, I started on boxing, did a little taekwondo, did some karate, and then now I, I, got, I started some jiu-jitsu just as a safety measure, and now all of a sudden I'm in fighting. You know, Ronda Rousey, who's the most famous female right now in fighting, started with judo. You know, Sarah McMahon started with wrestling. You started with volleyball and softball. What made you want to jump into MMA? Uh, well, I've always been an athlete, so this was – I felt like this was – was a, a chance for me to really take it upon myself because with softball, volleyball, basketball, you know, all the sports, it's a team thing. Um, it's dependent on other people. With fighting, I'm going in there, there's one other person across from me, and only one of us is walking out with our hands up. So um, I, I really I really like that. And so far, it's working out well, and I continue to, you know, I, I want to continue that. So... You have a 3-0 amateur record, and you're fighting January 5th in Invicta Fights with uh, promoter Shannon Knapp, which is by far, Shannon's one of the best promoters out there, male or female, in any organization, so that's a great spot to be. He's fantastic. Do you feel any added pressure now making, all of a sudden, that, you had that, one, that huge YouTube hit, and now all of a sudden you're fighting in Invicta? Is there added pressure that you feel, or are you just kind of brushing it off your shoulders as part of the game? Uh, you know, I, I feel like it happened uh, in my second fight as well. Um, so people have said, oh, well, you know, let's make it three, five seconds, but that's, that's not what I'm about. Um, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do me. And if it results in a five second knockout, then fantastic. If I go, you know, all three rounds, that's fine too. I'm going to go in there and do my thing and, um, we'll see what happens. So now a lot of the guys that train team alpha male, will you work out as well? A lot of the guys always say that you're right favor is one of the guys that really helps them out and any kind of added extras that they don't really understand, mm -hmm. they always lean on him to kind of explain to him, explain to them what's going on. So do you lean on Uriah too, like the rest of the guys? You go in there and go, look, you know, this is one of the things I'm, I'm questioning, pressure, media, doing interviews like this, not only training. Do you guys, does everyone kind of rely on Uriah Faber in that sense? No, Uriah, he's, he's awesome. He, uh, he's incredibly helpful, whether it's um, during during training or about the fight game, uh, basically whatever you go to him with, he's always willing to help. And I can't, I, he is, you know, this is a huge opportunity for me and I'm very appreciative of him and the rest of Team Alpha Male and everybody at Ultimate Fitness. They've been incredibly welcoming and just, um, like I said, I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier here. A lot, a lot of women when they're trying to train in MMA, they have a hard time finding practice partners, but I'm assuming a team alpha male, you shouldn't have any problem at all. There's a ton of great guys right around your size that they're able to train with. Ooh, Absolutely. Um, this is a, you know, best gym in the country I, as far as lightweights are concerned, for sure. And for me to come in here, um, my ground game is definitely something that I'm always, look, I'm always looking to improve in all areas. And the fact that I can come in here and um, roll with these guys and, you know, it's fantastic. It's really um, 
right now this is the best thing that can happen for me. So, like I said, truly blessed. Well, we've all seen the news. Ronda Rousey signs with the UFC. She's the only female fighter right now. And that's at 135. You fight at 145. The UFC more than likely is going to expand. They're going to, they're going to get more weight classes in for the women. Do you see yourself making that move over to, over to the UFC eventually at the 145-pound weight class? Uh, absolutely. Um, there's, yes. Uh, 135 is the only weight class, like you said, they have right now. It's only a matter of time before they branch out. And, and you know, 135 isn't the only weight class that can bring the excitement and the, the show that UFC fans are looking for. So I, like you said, I have my fight um, January 5th with Invicta. And hopefully uh, that will, you know, be my opportunity to really shine and, and show everybody what I got. And, I mean, UFC is only a, you know, Pops gave it a jump away now. Now that uh, Shannon's dealing with them and, you know, Ron is in. So it's only a matter of time. I'm very excited about the future. I got to be honest with you. I've seen all your fights. I, I, I'm very excited about seeing you fight January 5th for Invicta. I'm not going to be there, unfortunately. I'm going to have to watch it at home on the internet like uh, all the other Shamils that can't make it out to the Kansas City. But I got to be honest with you. If the UFC does expand to 145, I got to think that you're going to be one of the first ladies you're going to try to pick up. You have that style, you have the look, and you have the attitude that is indicative of a female fighter that can actually help promote the sport and help expand it. As much as Shannon Knapp has been doing with Invicta, you'll be able to do that on your own if the UFC does decide to call you. I, I really, really believe that you're going to be one of the first ladies that they'll call for the 145-pound weight class. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Frank. I, I definitely hope so. Well, you know, Veronica, this being only your, your third or fourth interview you've ever done, i got to be honest with you, you did a great job. You're very articulate. You so you're, very, you're very smart. And the only thing that you have going against you is the fact that you're friends with Sneaky Tommy. Other than that, everything else is fine. Well, Frank, thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate it, Veronica. We'll talk to you again. This is MMADraft.com. We'll see you soon.